Dr. Sepper, could you explain to us your experience with fibrocystic breast syndrome and thermography? Let me explain what is exactly the fibrocystic disease. Fibrocystic disease is the dishormonal condition. When we have uh, fluctuations in uh, hormonal metabolic status, uh, like estrogens, progesterone, thyroid hormones, and there this balance causes uh, the development of the cysts and uh, some connective tissues in breast because breast uh, uh, one of the most sensitive organs in uh, our body, in women's body, to, uh, to develop such kind of cystic process uh, in response of uh, hormonal fluctuations. In Georgian uh, Center of Oncology where, where I was working, we had a lot of patients with breast fibrocystic disease and uh, we had active treatment for these patients, for these women. Uh, here in America it uh, looks strange that the uh, most advanced country in the in medicine and in oncology particularly uh, I I don't want to use the word ignore, but it's close to this when we are talking about breast fiber cystic disease. According to statistics, 36% of women in the United States and worldwide have fiber cystic disease. So uh, I think that uh, it's our responsibility to perform the active diagnostic and active treatment of these people and the thermography, medical thermography uh, should be one of the leading methods to do this very, very important job. So Dr. Sepper, with fibrocystic breast syndrome being so prevalent in our society and of course leading to breast cancer, what can women do in order to reduce their risk of fibrocystic breast and breast cancer? First of all, uh, let me uh, express that uh, not too many doctors uh, want and have time probably to explain their patients, women with fibrocystic disease, what they should do. Uh, there are several very uh, simple but very important ways to reduce the incidence of uh, breast fiber cystic disease. First, it's the special training of mind to reduce the stress influence. That's very important because of huge stressful life today uh, and a lot of information uh, which influences our brain and of course the uh, regulation of uh, hormones that starts from the, our central nervous system. Another is the caffeine beverages like coffee, uh, some uh, kind of uh, teas, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, uh, which uh, contain uh, a very uh, high percentage of caffeine and in women's organism, uh, the caffeine in matters of 40-45 minutes uh, transforms into estrogen. Uh, as well as uh, certain foods that uh, can influence metabolic process of hormones like, uh, you know, uh, trans, fat, trans fats, how you call it. I mentioned trans fatty acids which uh, also can cause uh, the dishormonal conditions and uh, we have to actively explain women that let's say uh, such kind of fats uh, like avocado, like olive oil uh, and other uh, oils that contain uh, unsaturated fatty acids they are good for them and uh, oils and fats that contain the saturated fatty acids, they are 
they are not good and today a uh, long time consumption can cause this hormonal conditions as well as uh, today food contains a lot of pesticides that uh, of course uh, unpredictable and we uh, don't know what kind of uh, metabolic abnormalities they can cause. Uh, we can only theorize uh, and make some predictions but uh, nobody knows exactly what kind of metabolic pathways uh, can be involved in this process. Dr. Sepp, how would you use thermal imaging to identify fibrocystic breast patterns? It shows us the kind of, you know, spotty picture on, uh, on breast uh, thermograms. Breast fibrocystic disease by uh, the method of thermography is, uh, has a very high specificity and very high sensitivity. Uh, if, we will, uh, if we will talk more specifically, more than 90%. So Dr. Shepard, in, in the United States and countries that don't utilize thermography regularly, then how can they even detect if there's fibrocystic disease in the first place? First, uh, let me stop on some clinical signs of fibrocystic breast disease. First, it's pain. Different grades of pain, by the way, from, let's say, from 0 to 10. And uh, sometimes they have very unbearable pain. But uh, in most cases, the pain is around 5, 6. The second is the dense and uh, dense breast and uh, breast tenderness. Sometimes breasts are so tender that uh, women cannot even touch. In certain percentage, not very high, but certain percentage, uh, we see the nipple discharge. And all these uh, forces women to go to uh, their doctors and simple uh, palpation and uh, you know, conversation with the patient uh, gives the doctor uh, the information to diagnose the uh, or to suspect the fibrocystic breast disease. Uh, then uh, comes the series of uh, the uh, additional uh, tests like mammography first, sometimes biopsy, and unfortunately in uh, this series of tests uh, thermography doesn't have its place that it should have.